Hello everybody, this is Tortoise Investing coming at you today with a Kroger analysis as requested by the Hubs. If there are any stocks or anything that you would all ends the viewers would like for me to dive into and do a quick analysis on, just let me know down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to dive into some of these and uh, see what we can find out. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, join the 404 that have already done so, and I do a bunch of uh, top stocks you can buy and hold forever. So if that's something that you think you'd like, go ahead and hit that button. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is for educational purposes. This is not financial advice. So Kroger. Kroger is a retail store. They got nearly 2,800 stores in 35 states, and they do an annual sales of more than $132.5 billion. A lot of money. So we're going to take a look at Kroger here through Insights. Kroger has an adjusted free cash flow of 7.5%. That is really good. They got a dividend yield 2.49% and a payout ratio of 29.8%. A good low payout ratio. Really nice like middle range dividend yield. I like what I'm seeing so far. So they had a recent high. Let's see here. Look at the five-year chart. Looks like at one point they had touched the 60s and they had went back down into the low the low to mid 40s and they're at 47 right now. So not too bad. Um, thir off 13 bucks from their recent high about a year or so ago. So maybe a good buying opportunity. So take a look at the revenue chart here over the last 10 years. Been increasing at a rate of 4.36%. Their free cash flow has been increasing at a rate of, we're going to look at the last five, 15.34%. So, not too bad. They keep a, a good little bit of cash on hand. Their EPS has been rising at a rate of 7.22% over the last 10 years. Uh, they do have some debt. It looks like they started paying it off slowly but surely. They got $11.9 billion in debt. Their EBITDA is $7.7 .7 billion. I like companies to not have more than three times their EBITDA in debt. Kroger definitely falls in line with that. So nothing to complain about there. Their recent hike was from $0.26 cents to $0.29. Cents. So what is that? Like right at 10%, 10 or 11% increase. Uh, over the last 10 years, their dividend's been increasing at a rate of 14.4%. So pretty good little dividend grower there. Nice compounder. Uh, shares outstanding. It looks like they were buying back shares, but they increased their share count 2023. I think this has a lot to do with their acquisition of Al. Al they're, they're buying another branch. I can't think of the name of it. But that's probably where this little bump came from. But I'm sure that this will probably continue because it looks like they have a history of buying back their shares, which is always a good thing. You like to see that. Uh, their return on capital employed has been nothing but going up. Uh, they had the 2020 down. Everyone was down in 2020. Uh, 7% and they have returned up to 12.55%. So have nearly doubled their uh, return on capital employed in the last three years. It's very nice. It's a, you like a growing uh, ROC when it comes to any company. This A growing ROC with a history of share buybacks. And a good growing dividend checks a lot of uh, mar uh, checks a lot of boxes for me, and they got a good uh, adjusted free cash flow yield. So I like what I see so far. Uh, so we're gonna put it into the Peter Lynch value calculator here and see how this comes out. So the way that this works, if it's a value less than one, it's overvalued. Equal to one is fair valued. Equal to two is undervalued, and more than three is very undervalued. So we need to figure out the EPS growth rate to do that. I go to Zacks.com, estimated EPS growth rate for the next three to five years. We got 5.76%. So I'm going to put that in there. And for the dividend yield and the PE, we're going to look just literally Google KR stock. That's the stock ticker. Uh, it's got a PE ratio right now, 13.51. So we're going to go ahead and 13.51. And the dividend yield, setting at 2.47. So we're we'll going to put that in there, 2.47. And according to the calculator, it Peter Lynch would be like, this is overvalued. But, I mean, 
that's just what this calculator says. He might have bought it. He might not. I'm not sure. That's just what this thing says. So uh, I think that this could be a little bit higher, uh, especially for where the PE is at right now. So I don't know if share buybacks and stuff, maybe increasing overall sales might be something to increase their EPS going forward. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what the uh, analysts say, the people that this is their jobs. So on tipbranks.com, we got six holds and five buys of an average price target of $51.91 over the next 12 months. That is a 10.45% upside. So not too bad. Uh, I like the company. I like that it's got a good, strong history of dividend increases. I mean, <laughs> way back here. Um, right now, I do feel it's a little pricey, a little bit. Uh, I would like to see this in the low 40s. If it definitely if it could hit the 40, that would be ideal. But, I mean, you never know. All companies, you can't just go off of what the past is for pricing or if something's going to run up or not. Uh, that all comes down to what you believe. Do you like Kroger? Do you go to Kroger all the time? Are you are you a fan of their products? I mean, I I own stocks just because I like the company. Uh, Dollar General is one of them. A lot of people are running away from that like crazy, but it dipped in the 160s, and I'm like, gimme, gimme, gimme. But uh, yeah, Kroger, I like it. I think that it could go down a little bit, and it would make it a lot more appealing. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Dubs, hope that helped you a little bit. And uh, yeah, let me know down below if there's any other stonks that you want me to take a look at. And until next time, see yous.